Welcome to CA Associates' web presentation on analyzing plastic parts with finite element analysis. This presentation was part of CA Associates' 2014 Users Conference titled Accurate FEA of Engineering Plastics. To view other presentations from the conference, go to our website at www.caeai.com and enter the word plastics in the search box. Let's begin with a brief definition of finite element analysis. Finite element analysis, or FEA, is a method for simulating loading conditions to determine a structure's response. The structure is represented by small building blocks called elements. The unknowns of the system are calculated at the points shared by the adjoining elements called nodes. Material properties are assigned to each element, and the response of each element is evaluated, and then those individual responses are summed together to yield the total response of the structure. Modeling plastic parts with FEA can be challenging. For instance, what if you needed to model this highly sophisticated interlocking brick system shown here? The requirements for this particular design are that the part will be made from a thermoplastic material. The amount of force needed to interlock the pieces should be small enough such that a child can assemble them. The parts need to be able to survive multiple interlocking cycles. And the system must be able to perform in environments ranging from 20 to 35 degrees Celsius. With the finite element model, we can determine the amount of force required to connect the pieces, evaluate the sensitivity to manufacturing variances, evaluate the sensitivity to material property variances. And these variances can come from different temperatures, material compositions, or material vendors. All this can be done with FEA, provided that we have accurate and appropriate material properties. Material properties are used by the finite element model to determine the mass and stiffness of the structure and the relationship between stress and strain. In most cases, the stress-strain relationship is initially defined using a linear function known as Young's modulus. When unloaded, the structure returns to the undeformed state. Linear material models for most materials are available from a variety of sources. They can come from material data sheets from suppliers, they can come from textbooks, or from online databases such as matweb.com. Let's take a look at our finite element model. We have two pieces that we'll be analyzing, uh, what we'll refer to as the leg and the block. We've assigned material properties to the leg and the block, and we've defined a frictional contact region between the two pieces. As we press the two pieces together, we'll be able to determine what the amount of force required is to do so. The frictional coefficient between the two surfaces may vary based on the material, which is another sensitivity that we can evaluate using this model. We define our finite element mesh settings and generate our mesh, and then we define the environment that we need to analyze the part in. Looking at our structural static environment, we're going to be placing a fixed support on the cylindrical hole in the leg, and a specified displacement at the bottom of the block to push it into the cavity of the leg. If we look down here under the environment at temperature for our particular part, we'll be analyzing this part at 20 degrees C. And then later on, we'll go back and analyze it again at the higher temperature. When we generate the solution for this part, we can then look at the, the reacted force, or the amount of force required to push the two blocks together. As we can see in this case, our maximum force is around 1.478 newtons, which is about a third of a pound in force. So everything is looking good from this standpoint, but now we need to go and look at the resulting strain and stress. So we'll start by looking at the equivalent stress that's induced, or the von Mises stress between the two parts. As we can see from the animation here, as the parts are pressed together, we get a very high initial stress when the contact is introduced. The elastic limit for this material is around 18 megapascals. And we can see that we are seeing stresses above that quantity. Here's where we need to be careful. We've defined our material model as linear. So the finite element program 
is calculating the relationship between stress and strain using that linear modulus, uh, regardless of the amount of stress that's induced. The reason we have to be cautious here is that if we look at the plot of stress versus strain and consider that any stresses that occur above the elastic limit, shown by the red line, are completely false, we have to find another way to determine what's happening to the part beyond that elastic limit. This is where we introduce a nonlinear material model. So beyond that elastic limit, we determine or we describe the softening of the material uh, or how is the stress going to be accumulated with respect to additional strain in the part. Finding nonlinear material properties can be very challenging, especially for specialized materials. DataPoint Labs Materiality Database provides nonlinear materials in a format that is readable by the ANSYS program. DataPoint Labs also has expertise in testing advanced materials. So if your material is not available in their database, they can generate the data for you. In our case, we are, we're also interested in evaluating the response of our part in multiple temperature environments. So when we obtain our nonlinear material data, we need to be sure that we obtain different curves for different temperatures, which we enter into the ANSYS program. When we have multiple material curves, we can then look at the force that's required at both the 20C and the 35 degree C environment. Returning to the stress discussion, if you recall from the linear material model, we had a very high or 50 megapascal stress initially that was occurring in the leg. That stress was highly localized and was calculated using the elastic relationship between stress and strain. So we know from our previous discussion that any stress calculated beyond that 18 megapascal limit was in error. When we add our nonlinear material definition and reevaluate the part, we can see that first off, the stress that's induced by the contact is significantly lower. That's because the, the elements that are in the contact region are starting to go plastic or starting to induce permanent plastic strain. As they go plastic, they soften, and the load is redistributed to the surrounding elements, which is evident in the stress distribution. You can see that the distribution is far wider in the nonlinear case than it is in the linear case. So we're still inducing some plastic strain but we're inducing significantly less overall stress than we were in the linear case. Additionally, the stresses that we're calculating in the nonlinear material model can be considered accurate, whereas they are completely false in the linear case. If we then look at the plastic strain that's being induced in the nonlinear model, we can see that it's highly localized for that first insertion point in and around where the contact occurs. This is permanent strain, it is unrecoverable, and it also results in a, in a degree of permanent deformation uh, in that area. At this point, we should consider how much permanent strain is being induced and then potentially cycle the part to see how that plastic region can potentially grow. This will help us determine the life of our product uh, in that it's going to and try to determine whether or not it'll survive a sufficient number of cycles uh, for it to be adequate in the field. So in summary, even the best finite element model is only as good as the material properties that you use. The material properties must represent the environment that the structure will experience. The ANSYS finite element program can accommodate a wide range of material models, including nonlinear elasticity, hyperelasticity, elastic plastics response, as we saw today, viscoplasticity, creep, and temperature dependency. To find those advanced material properties, DataPoint Labs is an excellent resource in that they have an extensive library of nonlinear materials on hand, and they have the expertise to test the materials for you. Thank you for viewing CE Associates' web presentation on analyzing plastic parts with finite element analysis. For other presentations and e-learning seminars, please visit our website at www.caeai.com.